going back again. Okay. Um, back on another stream. And uh, I'm going to go back to um, work on the Smiley Gateway. Make sure my audio is working over there. Make sure my audio is working before I go on. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. The Gateway, uh, two, Celeron 2.8 gigahertz, I call it the Smiley Gateway of its face on the front and um, let's see well the previous video I went around and around with different stuff mostly on this Lenovo i5 but this one uh, I'm actually get to I kind of talked about what I wanted to do on this at the beginning of it and now and so now I'm going to really get going I didn't plan on taking so long on the on the Lenovo but anyway I uh, let's see I ended up downloading the Bane 9 uh, the net install image uh, because uh, I have some other domain nines already uh, but with the net install you can um, let's go to the desktop and I'll talk about them for a second okay here's the net install right here well that's on my machine still I'll just leave it like that um, Let's go to my backup drive. That's where I already have. Well, I actually went ahead and copied that one there. Let's see. So on my backup drive, I have uh, I have the Bane 8 and 9 is all I have on here. I've got uh, my other old machine's got some older versions. But anyway, um, did, that's the one I just in, in downloaded, the net install. Let's go by uh, extension so I can make sure it's wide. I guess I did that because of some long extensions. All right, so that's the one I just downloaded today. See, it's a smaller file too, so if you you know restrict it on space, uh, well, for instance, that'll fit on a CD real easy if you wanted to use a CD, and then it will download. It takes longer to install because you take you have to download everything as you're installing, but it also gives you a lot more choices. Like you could say, I want, you know, Mate. I think the Bane uses Mate desktop yeah I think it switched for, it used to be genome 2 and then it switched it stayed with genome 2 longer than anybody else uh, but it switched to mate I think and uh, or did it go to the XSCE as the default desktop um, and anyway you can pick desktop now I'll have to get in there to make sure but you can pick desktops you can uh, uh, you can uh, go. You can just do a you know a desktop machine or, or you know workstation like they Fedora calls it, or you can uh, you can pick you can just pick between menus and you can turn it into a server. You can do a lot of different things with that. And, and if you just get like say AMD sixty four, see that's i three eighty six too, and that that's a three eighty. Uh, well, it's not a three eighty six machine. It's a thirty two bit machine, but. They kept using the label 386 long after 38, you know, way after 386s. It's, it's a 680, yeah, I believe it's a, it's either a 586 or 686 machine. I, you know, 586, 686. Uh, but it's a 32 bit operating system, so you can't use the 64 bit on it, you know. This is 64 bit XF, XFCE, the CD. Now that'll just give you the, the default. Desktop, which I think is Mate and, and, and X. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It'll give you XFCE because it is XFCE, but it'll be the default to Bane setup with XFCE desktop. And what's this one? Uh, that's the i 36 XFCE. I went ahead and got the XFCE because it's the lightest weight desktop. And usually I put the Bane on my lower, re older, you know, machines with lower resources. And then AM, uh, <coughs> AMD 64 Mate. And see, there's Mate desktop. I386 mates. Uh, I just went ahead and got them all uh, soon, right after, not long after nine uh, came out, <clears throat> and uh, I haven't used it that many different times yet. But it's the one uh, that will run. The Bane is the, my fa of my of the distros. You know, my favorite two favorite distros are Fedora and Bane, and the Bane will run on the older machines where uh, Fedora it really needs a gig of RAM minimum to run right. I was looking at that earlier, and uh, if you were like running a headless, you know, with no GUI, you could, uh, like I say, a server with no GUI, then you could run Fedora on 768 megabyte. I looked that up earlier today on the previous video. And uh, what's this? Net install. Okay, those are both net installs. That's 64-bit. That's 64-bit. 
And then what's this? One more. It's I three eighty six net install. No. Oh, that says those are firmware. Oh yeah, I had forgotten about that. Those are not the bane. That's the firmware. So this is I didn't never notice that before. But you can download. When they say firmware, you know, you usually like in Windows talk, you'd say uh, drivers. So this is uh, you can have them on an ISO. Uh, all I guess all that's available for 64-bit and all that's available for 386 for Debang, you know. Uh, what you can do is once you get installed, you could mount this ISO. Could burn it to a CD or or US put it on a USB stick or whatever too, but. You'd burn it to a CD, or a, these are small enough you could burn them to CDs, and uh, you know you'd have your driver CD to install those from. Uh, what's what I thought would be neat about that is you won't have to spend forever. You might be quicker than spending forever searching for the firmware or uh, drivers you need uh, through the domain repo. Which is, uh, although you're going to be using Synaptic, which is a great search in it, it's not like dnf drag or that is a drag to search in so um uh you know it would be a lot easier but and i used to use i used to use i discovered synaptic the the package manager my early days of fedora fedora 5 6 7 uh, i used to use it uh, up till 7 or 8 and uh, then it got to where it just didn't work very well. Then it then around of, right after Fedora 11, it got to where it wouldn't work at all in Fedora anymore. But uh, I don't I don't know if you could, I don't think you may not be able to install it anymore. You might in Fedora, but uh, and back then I even used to run uh, if there wasn't a, a Fedora or RP, I didn't really realize the big difference back then. But the RPM apps, you know, the dot RPM, that's the file extension that Fedora uses. That's what they package in. Their apps in, it's um, well, it's set up for Fedora and other uh, operating systems that use they call them RPM based distros is how they say it, and Debane uses the .deb deb, and uh, but I found some apps way back that would allow you to run debs on Fedora, so great, and I did it, and it was I don't know I would say around 50-50 of how well they would work, you know, so um, and sometimes you would actually kind of make your system act up by doing that too, so. Or you'd be running along and working away, and I mean, it's just in. And when after you install them, they're just in your applications menu. So you f might forget that that one's actually a dev, and so you open it up and you forget. Oh yeah, that crashes the system. You know, even uh, I don't know if it, I don't remember if it really ever crashed the system, but sometimes apps will um, when they they'll make the system not run right after they act up. You know, and then you got to reboot. Um, there has been a few apps over the years that crashed my systems, uh, and I generally just completely uninstall them so that I don't have that problem anymore. But anyway, um, since this uh, gate, Smiley Gateway only has, I only have 512 mega. Well, it's only got two RAM sticks, so and the biggest RAM I have just plain DDR RAM, the version one DDR. I just have 250. I only have 256 gigabyte sticks, so it's full. You know, 512 megabyte. <coughs> now I could, I think I'm sure it would hold two gig. I get, I'd, I'd have to look up the motherboard to make sure, but it might even hold more than that for all I know. But I looked up the other day. You can get, I can get two gig for eleven dollars and fifty cents. Uh, Computer Bay brand on Amazon is where I got. I got. Three sets of it, I think, about two years, 2015 or something like that, yeah. And then none of them gave any problems. They're just great. Uh, or, but if I decide to quit use, use this for a server, that's the other thing. But if I keep going around and around, if I decide to use this for a server, I'll pull my two gig out of the IBM, I guess, and put it in here. And then I think it has th it has three or maybe even four memory slots. I could put three or four 256 sticks in the IBM and bring it back up to at least you know, like a gig or something of RAM. Uh, but it's, uh, right now I don't think it's making noise. Not, not any that I can hear. But it's been going back and forth between making noise again after, uh, after you know, it ran pretty quiet the first two or three days I got it back up. But it's been making some different noises. Sometimes I hear the hard drive um, just sitting there making noise. And so 
I'm I'm concerned that that hard driver it is you know still maybe on on its last legs, and that fan. It's okay, but it has a little bit of a. I called it yesterday the other day. It's kind of like a lifter ticking sound, or sometimes it sounds like a clock. You know, like when you got a grandfather clock on room ticking away. Kind of sounds like that sometimes, and sometimes it's louder than others. And when it's louder, it bothers me. So. Uh, gotten used to it being quiet you know um so um because the lenovo i5 is really quiet and uh and so usually i just have the it and uh and the ibm my server you know i it's just a desktop set a tower desktop set set up as a server but i really don't want to run to bane as my all the time server it's fine for a backup server but uh, i don't want to run it as my server all the time because I really like uh, SE Linux security setup that comes in Fedora, and I just like Fedora better. So yeah, I, I've been kind of wanting to put something on that that IBM because it's just so you, you know it's just got a hard drive that's formatted FAT32. I just did that to make sure I could, the hard drive was going to be okay and going to work because it was it had a it had a broken XP system on it. it was the the partition was lost. And I looked into that the other day, and you, I got to get it back. I saw it and test this, but I don't want it because I'm sure it's full of viruses. That's probably what broke it. Usually, what happens. But um, um, so um, I don't really want to spend all that time installing Windows. I mean, I might. It's got a Windows XP Home license on it, and if I did put it on there and fiddle around with it a while, I wouldn't want it for very long because I have XP Pro virtual machine that I can just I haven't uh, set it up in this new machine yet but I could do that and that's it's so convenient when I do need to run Windows I can just do it in the virtual machine right here on my main machine without rebooting or anything so I like doing that um, once in a while it's be good to have an actual machine but not too and too often and besides XP Pro set up as a Win, Windows terminal when term um, put you set up the BIOS, the registry in that way. I learned how to do that a couple of years, a few years ago when they, you know, retired XP. Uh, anyway, setting up as a, that way makes it get security updates until 2019. Of course, that's coming up pretty quick. But home, I tried it on home and it didn't work. I did it on, well, I did it on that Dell 6000 laptop, uh, I believe. I never saw it update. But it does just perfectly in my XP Pro, so I think that's why, because it's Pro, and so it it's an inter, you know it's for enterprise. Pro is for enterprise, and so that's an enterprise feature, you know, that uh, updates they get for the uh, Win term Win, Windows terminal stuff. So uh, if I did build an actual machine, I, I'd rather use <coughs> Pro. And I might have another one with Pro license on it somewhere. I don't know one of these other machines, old machines I have. But that's not what I need to be doing. I'm trying to get. I may end up having to work through some of these boot errors on my Lenovo i5 and straighten them out before and see if I make sure I don't get into the same thing on Mom's machine. But I need, I want to get to Mom's machine and get it set up and done. Do Fedora 28 on it. Um. I did remember, I think I remember, I didn't say this earlier today, but I remember while I was some point in here, while I was eating lunch, I guess, I ate, or supper, I ate my supper. It, it, uh, I've been up at night lately, so this was my supper. Um, the errors <coughs> that I was having, I finally realized, um, let's see, which ones are the ones? For, yeah, for it failed to load kernel modules, uh, and I finally realized, oh yeah, this didn't come up until right after I installed VirtualBox. And VirtualBox, it, uh, part of its installation, it installed the ACK mods and the K mods. Which what they do is they they wait, tell the kernel to wait its update, tell the system to wait to update its kernel until the uh, updates that match it for VirtualBox are out. Which is good for a uh, virtual box not breaking, but it's actually not. Uh, in that case, I just, I might not care. I might rather have my kernel modules updated, you know, so that uh, 
if virtual box is broken for a week or a month, uh, it's not the end of the world. I don't use it that much. So that's what's not starting is those ACK mods and K mods. And that wasn't happening before. I'm seeing every, uh, and it's funny. And I installed that in, uh, well, I think I'll install it. I installed it in DNF back or I sure did. Okay. So it's got nothing to do with, I keep thinking is that software app not installing things right because I installed a Fedora media writer. And actually I remember today there's an older version called Fedora media writer. There's a newer one just called media writer. And the one I really want is media writer. And I tried actually, even though I have Fedora Meteor Writer on my system, I uh, well, yeah, I thought after a reboot I'd look and see. I try. I installed another one that uh, I didn't see Fedora Meteor Writer in. Now I've installed that in software. That app called Software. That's a package manager. Get on the desktop and look right now. And I in DNF Dragora today after I already had Fedora Meteor Writer. Let's look. I still just have Fedora Media Writer. And uh, it looks just like it should. And everything seems to work okay now. At first it didn't. It was not running. Right. The window would go, it would, you know, you'd be able to see it. See this, like if I switched over here and then switched back, you'd be able to, well, now there you go. That's what it was doing. Um, so earlier today when I, okay, it's doing it right now. And, and what I, you know, I noticed I immediately got it to full screen. It, it seems like when you open it up in full screen, it does this and it don't think it'll come back. And also if I click on Fedora server, it'll crash every single time. Um, and I don't think it'll come back and quit, uh, acting like that. Which one am I in? See, it's trying to, there we go. It's trying, I just wasn't in the right window. Meteor Rider. Okay, now I can kill it if I need to. Yeah, it, it won't come back. So there's something really wrong with it. And I probably ought to try to uninstall it. What I don't understand is how come I was able to, uh, now I'm back to this machine again. Um, well, it needs fixing, that's for sure. Let's look and see. Uh, let me look again. Let's see. Media. Yeah, there's only one showing up. Unless um, it doesn't show up in this, you know, the search app. Uh, that's XFCF Finder. There's sometimes you'll install an app and you know you have it, but it won't find it even after it's had a chance to scan and or having a reboot or whatever, it still doesn't show up. Once in a while, a reboot will just make it work. I don't see. I might be an accessories. <laughs> if you hit M, the thing is, if you hit M and there's only one M in that menu, it'll just open that app, which is not the end of the world, but... Yeah, I don't... I don't know what menu it's in. That's why I like to use search. It can be a real aggravation to try to find things. No M's at all in there. Let's see. I don't know if I ever checked my sound. Yeah, I think I did at the beginning. Well, let's check it again. Okay, we're still good. All right. Um... Yeah, that's mate desktop. Okay. Could be off in some odd place, but It could be in sound and video then. It, yeah, it could be because. Well, I'll be darned. I don't see. Fed oh, I know why. Because it's under Fedora. There 
there, Fedora Media Router. Now earlier, it would everything worked, and I could make it full screen and everything, and it was fine. But just now it did that. So see, I can't use it. That's the thing. Now the one that I installed in uh, in software. Oh, well, I mean that's the one I installed in software. Apper is the other one that. Used, that was the one that I used for years and years. It was the default. Uh, but it won't, uh, I'm not going to open it now because it seemed to make the system not run good and went after I opened it. Uh, and it wouldn't work at all. It was it was well, kind of like, well, no, it was all there, but there was missing things in the windows, like, you know, in the, in the sections. Really weird. So, and I think, I don't remember what I installed. I think I installed Apper in DNF Dragor, so it should have got, and I checked in my previous video, I looked around, and DN, Dragor should check for all dependencies. All this stuff was already installed. I installed some more uh, plugins for Dragora earlier today, tonight. Okay, now this is uh, software, and I it seems to work fine, and especially if you're brand new to Fedora or Linux, it really helps you finding apps and stuff. You know, it suggests uh, popular apps and and uh, all that kind of stuff, and then. And you can go installed like that. So it's installed real quick. Or you can do that in Dragor too. But well, I guess it's not quick in either one of them. <coughs> but uh, I don't think you can. Yeah, you can just start typing. Fedora Media Writer. Okay, now. I could go ahead and try to uninstall that. Right there on this, I'm gonna try that and see if, I and mean, it won't run. Let's see if it. Now here, the thing I want to know is, is it gonna? Is it going to break something else? I hope it doesn't just do it. Um, well, I think it is just doing it. Uh, Dragora <laughs> stops and says. Uh, It'll say, at least it tells you what all else is going to be uninstalled, but like I was saying earlier, uh, I just did it. Well, we'll just see how it goes. I mean, it might not be, if I didn't have so much trouble with the Dragora, I wouldn't try to use these others, but it really is hard to use. Um, so it did it, okay. Well, that's where I installed it, so. Um, now, see, that makes me uncomfortable, though, because... In Dragora, um, it tells you what else is going to be uninstalled, and, and you, if you see that oh, that stuff is, might be needed with other apps, or it may use, I think it'll tell you, used to. I'm confused because there, there's so many changes. I got something on my shirt bugging me. There are uh, so many changes between Yum, Yum DNF, Yum Extender, and Yum Extender DNF, and now Dragora. So it's kind of hard to say it. I'm, Remember it all right. <laughs> I just got there eating my supper. I guess I'm about half, I'm about half asleep or something. Let's see. Um, what I'm thinking is this is an uh, this is obviously not their default app, and it may not be being, this software app. It may not be being developed anymore. So it may be uh, showing older software too. Um, yeah. There's UNet booting, and it's already installed, but I did that in DNF Dragora. But it's not running right either. <clears throat> so now I'm going to get out of this. Genome software. That still hasn't quit yet. I don't know if it keeps running in the background to, like, check for it. it, it I noticed it started telling me about updates I don't think you want so that's what that is this genome software which uh, came out as a default software manager in some point there 24 door 2021 or something and I didn't like it so that's when I started using Yomex uh, they quit using they had quit using Apper started using genome software and, and I didn't I really didn't like it I liked Apper better and so then uh, I switched to uh, yeah, I'm extender. I already had it. I just started using it. But, uh, 
Anyway, let's just see if we can kill it. Because I don't want two software man package managers, software managers running at the same time. Now, um, let's go into DNF driver. Oh, and I did turn off that. See the little L icon's not up there. Well, I mean, I don't know for sure because I don't know for sure if there's updates. But I turned off the uh, software updater, this portion here, from coming on, turning on automatically at boot but I don't think that'll hurt my automatic updates because I don't think they need that from what I understand okay let's see now it's in all it stayed in all sometimes it'll stay if I leave it in all and shut it close it down it'll stay there and sometimes it and then the next sometimes it'll go back the other way to always going straight to updates which is it's aggravating for me because I, I go in and out of it a lot when I'm building a system, and I don't want to wait to sh check for updates and then switch to all and wait for it to load all. Um, if you just used it every once in a while, you would be good to know that updates, you know, what updates are there. Okay, now let's see if that same app, oh, you got to hit me, click, and you got to switch to whichever one will find it. Uh, it, I've never had such an aggravating experience with an application. Oh, there we go. So, this is the one I installed. But see, when I got in here earlier today, it, none of these were installed. I tried to install this one, and it couldn't do it. It gave some sort of error. So, I installed this one. But once I got done, it showed both of these. So, but this is called... Uh, Ming 64 media router. Maybe this is a terminal app. I didn't think about that. Ming GW. Oh, you can't. I guess I open up my browser and go to the website and see. But that that those two weren't conflicting or anything because I just turned that on there today and that's I've had that same problem with that Fedora media router ever since I first installed it. And I haven't read the Fedora 28. <laughs> Maybe I better. The inst you know, I hadn't read through the install instructions. I've already used it. I used Fedora. I used Media Writer. There's two of them. There's Fedora Media Writer and Media Writer. Uh, at least that's the way I see it. And either that or just the newer version is just called Media Writer, like that. But uh, I used it and I installed it in Fedora 23 on my IBM server and made those USB sticks. Door 28 USB sticks and already installed it on here with no problems whatsoever. So I'm, you know, I'm starting to figure this must be a. Let's go to that website. This must be a Fedora 28 bug or something. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Media Fedora Media Router. Okay, that is what I just click. You know, Ming GW64 Fedora Media. Router. That's what I clicked on. So this is Fedora Media Router. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Right there. Okay, so let's see. But I don't have it anymore. Yeah. So... <clears throat> Oh, let's see. Here's troubleshooting right here at the top. Oh, please open an issue here. Huh. Okay. Well, I think it's usually not the case, but once in a while, if you got a broken application, you can uninstall it and reinstall it like in the old days with Windows. But just leave that doesn't help. Usually, just wait for some up, more more Fedora updates from the from the upstream, and uh, it'll be fixed. But we'll see. At least I do. I can do it on my server, but that you know, I don't have those ISOs on my server. I've got them on on my 
Well, I've got them on my backup drive, but my cable won't reach over to the server. I plugged it into the server a few weeks ago, and it didn't even recognize it. But then, actually, it was later on that the next day or two, I finally figured out. I think that's exactly when I, the other end, it's got two ends, two male ends, one for your computer and one for the plugs into the drive itself. And the one plugging into the drive is tiny. It's a weird proprietary USB plug. You know, it's not USB micro or any of that stuff. And it's tiny and very short, and so it's very easy to pull out. And I've had it pull out several times now. It's getting looser with age, even though I don't move that in very much. And uh, so, anyway, I think I pulled it out just enough. to It was still plugged in, but, you, you know, I looked at it. I remember looking at it, but it, I didn't grow up there and push on it. You know, So now I'm always pushing on it and make sure it's plugged in. Okay, so uh, anyway, I have to pull that drive out and move it. I mean, it only needs like another th three to six inches, but it has to come out from where it's at. So I don't usually want to plug it into the server. All right, the Ming G, uh, DW64. Now, th this stuff, like I said, was not installed until I did it earlier today. But all of that, okay, so there's nothing there besides that. So I'm going to go ahead and uninstall it. I didn't think about doing a screenshot. Oh, well, when I was doing that in Media Writer, uh, software, yeah, I'm I'm a little leery about jumping back and forth between uh, package managers, especially since now I haven't actually seen any. I don't remember seeing a single error in that software app. It's just the errors I've had with Media Writer after installing it on using that app and. It may be that since I installed it with the software app, DNF never registered somehow with maybe within itself it needs to it needs to uh no it, it you know it ha since it didn't install it it didn't know that it was there and until I installed this one that I'm uninstalling right now and then uh it, I don't know this is really not quite making sense because uh I mean, I don't know. Okay, yeah, each one of those are part of the, It's just a different part of the same app because when I click up there and up there, well, I think you can do that. <coughs> I'm not getting to another different site. I'll leave it up there because that's what I'm thinking of doing is reinstalling it from here to see if that will fix it. <coughs> but, uh, yeah, there's no... Uh, Oh, refresh metadata. Now, that I could have probably done if I'd have thought about it. And then uh, maybe it would have seen that Media Writer was installed. I don't know. I didn't, but it did, because it, it probably does refresh metadata every time you install something. So, or uninstall. Now it's doing the work. <coughs> Other thing is, though, I installed UNet booting, and it won't run right either. Um, let's fix it and go over there and show it. Say, well, but this is almost done now, so I'll go ahead and finish this. <clears throat> of course, some of those errors I've had could be the one of the reasons. There's another error that. Oh yeah, it says something about. That could be one. Of the, which one is it? I think it's the system. D modules is that it? No, not that one. It's the uh, Ben uh, Ben Empath config. Well, that's what it told me to run to fix it. Yeah, it said something. And when an error, I, I can't. Uh, I used to have a you know a digital camera handy, and anytime I saw a boot screen error, I'd take a picture of the screen. But I used to do that with my. I had a little knock on 775, but it died and it quit working. And it was good. It made it real. You could read every word with it. It's good lens, knock on lens. Then I start. I have another one that I hardly ever pull out. It's Olympus. I had it first, and it's uh, it's such a low re a resolution, so low megapixels. I think it's 1.2 or 3 megapixels or something. And it doesn't take screen pictures. You can't really read them, you know. 
not actually as bad as when I aim my camera. Well, when I aim these phone cameras at the screen and then zoom in, that's when it gets bad. If I was able to, uh, I used to say this all the time, uh, you get tired of saying it, but uh, if I, where that camera needs to be, that phone camera is where my face is. And then it, and, and I wouldn't have to zoom in and then, uh, well, that's if I'm filming at 1080p, but I'm filming at 720 because that's all I can stream over the Wi-Fi. <clears throat> but uh, okay, so it uninstalled. Everything's good there, and it's still the same. Um, yeah, same. So they're all the same app. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna leave that like it is. Let's see. So close this. Okay. Give the system a little less to do there. And yeah, I'm going to close that too. Okay, so um, UNET booting is the only thing I've got. Yeah. Now let's see if it'll run now. Sometimes after a reboot, some of this stuff like will run. Oh, but anyway, there could be a correlation between one of my boot errors and this problem I just remembered because it says it's locking out or locking, you know, turning it off. Let's see. Need the root privileges to run that. I didn't ever take a screenshot of that. No. It can't run this. Still can't run it. It's a weird looking command because it doesn't say anything about unit booting or anything. And I'm not getting any SC Linux alert, so it's not SC Linux stopping it. So, yeah, so that can't run either. So, uh, I'm just going to try installing Media Router like that. That would probably be the way to do it. And now it doesn't have all that extra stuff. It's only 3.3 .3 megabytes. Let's see if it makes a difference. If it doesn't, I'll just leave it like that uh, until a few more updates. And then maybe, you know, if it gets fixed, great. And if not, then I don't know. I'll have to go figuring it out again. Or use an older version or something. Older operating system. If I, I don't want to upgrade everything to Fedora 28 and not be able to do some of my important stuff. I don't know if it, I don't know if it would, uh, well, I don't really want to do stuff like that on Mom's machine since the whole reason I'm reformatting everything is because of the, for malware prevention since I uh, got that bad Firefox add on. Is it still working? looks like it's done, but I don't have it. Huh. It's there, though. Look at that. Isn't that strange? Never really seen that before. Get it off that screen. It is showing up to not be there. So let's refresh meta, refresh metadata. See if that makes it show up. Doesn't make it show up. Huh. So is that a bug? I would say it is. And that's AX8664. I would think that I think this is a slightly different uh graphic user interface. Is Ming GW, I think I don't remember for sure, but I think maybe Ming GW is a different graphic user interface programming, you know, tool. Oh but but looky there, won't run. Now after I installed it with Ming GW, it did run okay, uh, except for it would crash when you just like that when you click on Fedora 28. So I shouldn't have closed that. Uh, yeah, now it's come up with the. Okay, it's not. It's not still running. It's coming up with the crash report. Okay, so I'm going to go back into DNF. 
<clears throat> and I'm going to install that Ming GW and leave it like that. Can't do that. Now my mouse is not responding. I wonder if I'm getting updates right now or something. Oh, I wasn't done. No, it was, wasn't was done loading. I tried to do that too soon. That's all it was. Actually, what I meant is I wondered if Lucky Backups was running. I didn't mean updates. Uh, okay. So you can't find it like that. You can't find it like that. I'm starting to remember now, but what will I remember next time? Now I'm going to do the 64-bit of Ming GW, but I've already got the other. So now we'll do that. That's about 60 megabytes or something. Oops. And at least it runs. Uh, before when I had it like this, everything worked except for. Uh, well, just now, I, oh, I wouldn't. When I opened it up to full screen right after opening up the app, it messed it all up. Uh, but anyway, no matter what, when you click on server, it crashes. So, uh, now right now, I, well, right now it's not my biggest concern, though, is it? Because I'm not going to try to put that on this. Well, I'm, I might. If that uh, IBM starts making a bunch of noise again, I'll, I'll yank the RAM out of it and put it in the G, in the Smiley Gateway. And go ahead and install Fedora 28 server on it. I could do 27, I guess, but uh, if I think that I'm if if I decide that it really is Fedora 28 being buggy, or, or I got to figure out if it my problems I'm having are from the apps I installed. Well, I think it's probably from the apps I installed after. Uh, it's growing pains, you know. The apps I installed after I got the base base Fedora set up because like they work and work and of course they, they release one every year so that's pretty fast and so they work and work on getting it as good and then all the support you know all the other apps in the repositories and they've got to work on making them more you know, the changes in the newer release you know making their app work and the changes on the new release so sometimes i think oh, i'll stay a, a year behind but well that's what i thought on, on fedora 23 but then i stayed several years behind so this time I thought I'll just get the newest one. I used to always get the newest one anyway. I only did that. Uh, well, I don't know. Going in circles. Okay, now so it still doesn't show Meteor Rider as being there. That is very strange. Now let's go see before we. There it is. Now let's see if it runs any better. So far, so good. Workstation. That's the one with Gino, you know, and don't click on the server, custom image. Now that I've, see, now I could go and get the ones that I have, one I have downloaded, and then this is, I think it's working now. I should be able to do this now without it going nuts. But in the spins and the labs, and Somebody's doing some stuff outside. I could hear them kind of banging around, and then I heard a noise. It sounded like they were... I thought, what kind of machine are they running? And then I realized, oh, that's the fan on my Dell laptop. It's been playing the preview this whole time, and it's getting hot. Pause it. Let it, re let it rest. Okay. Uh, it's usually really quiet, but when it gets loud, it really, really starts... And <laughs> working hard, you can really hear it. So, uh, yeah, different desktops. I was trying to see. Okay. Yeah, so, um, oh, and, 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 and you got to pay. At some point there, you don't get to switch, and then other points you can switch after you've clicked on some other things. So if you go to 32 bit, which I guess is what I would do, I'd click 32 bit and then click custom image. And there's only one other thing. There's only one thing that it'll download for you, and that's uh, 
Ecuador scientific 32-bit. So, uh, but see, it seems like it would work, but I'm still a little leery of it. I mean, you could try it, but it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But um, I don't know. I already tried the refresh and made it that it didn't make a difference, but it works. Now, a while ago, earlier... Earlier, well, the strange thing is, earlier I already had Media Rider on, just on its own installed, and I did it in the software app, and then I installed Ming uh, DW64 Media Rider in, earlier today, and then it made them both show up. So I didn't just saw me uninstall it and reinstall it, but it, I didn't click on the uh, server because I was afraid it would crash it, but was part of what I was trying to do to see if it would fix it. Okay, so let's do that first. Now, let's see. Yep, still crashes right away. Instant, too. Okay, so something really goofy going on there. Um, all right, so now what I want to do is get over here on, uh, I'm just, I've just decided I'm just going to have the endoscope just, and I'll just go full screen endoscope and, uh, mess around with that fan and get it put, uh, usually I like to have, you know, a two screen view, the uh, height, but see, I want to, I'm going to want to use my, my camera too at this, at the monitor, just as soon as I get the other fan in there, uh, when I boot it up. So I thought, well, what's the, uh, it's moving cameras around and moving cameras around, you know, it'll take forever. So, uh, let me turn on the wireless mic, let me turn on the wireless mic and, uh, make sure all that's working. And then, oh, I know why that laptop's getting hotter, because I'm getting hotter. It's 78.6 in here. The sun's coming up. It was 77-something, now it's 78, which is not bad, but I've am been used to 72 to 75 this the last two, three weeks. 78.6 in here. The sun's coming up. Okay, there we go. Now I'll just pause that preview again, I guess. Yeah, because that thing needs rest. It's really working hard. <clears throat> okay. Now, that fan is the one that came out of the IBM. But it wasn't... Well, I, I, my one of my problems was... I know the hard drive sometimes makes noise. So one of my problems was deciphering exactly what which thing was making what noise and when you know so um i put i've sprayed that in with rust buster and let it set for two or three days before i actually brought it back in the house and then i don't guess i ever put it in anything again did i well i tested on it but i didn't actually put it in anything so um I'm going to put it in here because this brand new fan that's in this Smiley Gateway is a four pin and it's running full blast and it's so loud and, and a bad pitch that I just can't stand it. So that comes off easy because I've had it on and off so many times. Yeah, I like the new sticker to the side of my workbench. Now, that is the little plastic keeper that you can uh, get something sharp enough in there and you can uh, get them off, but sometimes they'll just break. But see, when the blades are turning, it's turning too. And you see the uh, what looks sort of like a washer. It's really, it's not metal, I'm sure, because I've taken them apart and I've never seen metal in there. It's plastic. So usually it's a bunch of plastic washer shims, you know. I think they're really more shims than anything, probably. And they all, I, like the last one, I, I didn't ever see one. One of the last ones I took apart, they had a bunch in there, and they all fell out, and I didn't know even which. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't know how many went on this side and how many went on the other side. But I think they were trying to, you know, they were using them to shim the, the blade to the right, keep it in the right distance. But with that spinning, 
if you break that and, you, and there's not much else you can put on there. One time I tried, I, I, I broke one and I tried to put some wire around this, you know, some really small copper wire to, to make a keeper that way, but it, it wasn't going to work. I just couldn't, it wasn't going to be successful. <coughs> it was really, really hard to even get it to get on there, I and mean, it wouldn't stay. <coughs> <coughs> so, I'm not going to break it apart. <coughs> I have a drink. I mean, the only way to really clean them, I've seen, I've taken several of them apart, and the only way to really get them clean is to take them apart. But get, making sure you get them back together. Now, this other one is the, is the big concern. This other one, the one with the broken fan, fin, I think that's the it right there. No, that wasn't it. But anyway, oh, yeah, it was. Um, this one I haven't tried to take apart, but I thought about taking those fins and putting them in this one if this one is just going to be too noisy. Because I imagine the steel shaft, if it's long as it's the same size and length, um, imagine that steel shaft, you know, you can just clean it up with some Scotch Brite. That's what I've done before. It's the bushing that get worn, you know. Um, and I, I, I've said, I keep saying, well, I, they You'd think they'd be brass bushings because that's what they usually use for those kind of dry bushings. But I think they may just be copper in these these things because they really seem to wear pretty quick, you know. I mean, a couple of years. One to five years, like, well, I don't know. It depends on some of these fans are five years old before they give up. Some of them are a year old before they start acting up. So, uh Anyway, I just wanted to show that and uh, put a little WD-40 on it, I think. thought about putting it in there first, but, you know, there's no point in that. Just put a little WD-40 on it. You know, I'm not going to be able to tell. I'm not trying to do a comparison test and <laughs> gather data. I just want it to work. <laughs> so I can spray it with a little WD-40 and put it, uh, put it in this machine and see if it's going to make lots of noise or not. Let's see, um, <clears throat> what's the other thing I want to do? I guess I really just want to put it in there, squirt it and put it in there. And, uh, yeah, I had debated about trying to get it apart to clean it right, but let's see if it, it's, it's really pretty easy to put them in. In, in this case, so and pretty hard to take them apart, like I was saying, and get them back together. So, uh, just grab me a paper towel. Well, actually, um, I grab me my little glove, one of my little natural gloves. I think one will be enough. If I don't get anything on it, I use I use them to clean my glasses. I keep one and use it over and over. Until it uh, wears out and breaks, uh, because the glass is cleaner and there's a lot of. Well, I don't, usually I use this one that has mostly ammonia in it and it's clear. And then some. I used to use Windex, but you can kind of see that blue uh, of the Windex. And so anyway, um, whichever one I use, they both have uh, chemicals that just one time of getting it on my fingers and not going and immediately and washing it off, my fingers will dry up and crack, my thumb will drop and crack and then bleed, end up bleeding. And, uh, you know, and it takes days for that to heal up. <clears throat> if not days, it takes a week or two for them to heal up. So, um, I try to always do that. So anyway, that's not why I'm wearing, wanting to wear it now. I want to wear it now to just keep from getting my hands dirty because then I got to leave my video to go wash my hands. Okay, so had this all right in the picture, but that's good enough. Let's see, I don't want to get the thing is I don't want to get any anywhere but where it, where I want it. So oh, that's almost out of. Did anything come out? Yeah, I didn't think anything came out. It didn't sound like it. But it did. That one's getting really low. So, uh, yeah. 
I don't really need that anymore right now. It almost looks like it went everywhere but in there. I think it did. I think it's just... You know what? I think it spins a little more freely. I don't know. Well, anyway, I did it. Uh, I'll just wipe up the excess. Oh yeah, there's there was quite a bit there on the on the uh, paper towel I was using, so I think I got plenty. I want to put the sticker back on there to try to hold uh, gloves look wet. I don't want to reuse them on my, I guess I won't reuse them on my glasses now. I'll end up wiping WD-40 all over my glasses. So that'll be a pair that I don't use again on the glasses. Or a single. It's not a pair, it's a single. Trying to look, look, use that to line me up is probably harder than. That's not too bad. Hopefully, I got enough of that Deputy 40 off of there so that that sticks. This is a good sticker. It's it's not just paper. It's like you know a vinyl plastic type stuff. I've had it on. That's the third or fourth time I've had it off and put it back on. Yeah, it actually hit it pretty good. Okay, so that'll kind of help hold the lubricant in there is what, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so um, this thing has uh, little thumb screws, which are really convenient. <clears throat> so that'll be all right. Now, if I get angle this just right, we'll be able to see the... Guess I'll have to tilt it up. I had it tilted down as much as I could to get it to actually I'm gonna leave it up there. Any anyway, it's gonna be a little blurry because it's too far away for that close up camera, but <clears throat> oh yeah, this is the ones that are hard to turn. I need my big screwdriver. So that's a four pin. Go ahead and unplug that first. Four pin, plug it into a three pin header on the motherboard and it runs full blast. There we go. So, uh, you know, that's why I, I, I'm changing it because it's just too loud for me to stand. I couldn't stand that in the garage, it's so loud if I was even out there. I let it run a while that one day to see if I could stand it, and I couldn't. Now this other one may make all the horrible noises of a worn out fan, but we'll just find out here. The threads aren't really very long or how far down in there it goes isn't very far. There we go, of course. Anyway, uh, on this one, it's just gonna try to, yeah, dump those screws out into that little thing I've been keeping it in. Now that's a brand new fan and I took it off of a brand new heat sink kit. This is the, yeah, the one I just worked on. Now what I'm wondering is, does it have marks on it to tell you which way it goes? Let's see if we can tell by the, on the camera. Yeah, I can see it if they're there. Or we can see it if they're there. I think this is the one that don't have any. Because <clears throat> it comes with a really nice, uh, metal guard, fan, fan shroud, <clears throat> but if I put it on this way, it doesn't necessarily need it. 
Let's see, this other one. Oh, okay. That one was blowing up, and actually that's kind of, that's really the way I want it. Okay, yeah, so if I put it on with the blades like that, it'll probably blow up too, if I put it like that. So. Trying to see which way I want to do that. I think I'll do it this way. Yeah, <clears throat> should line up okay. Same size and everything. And I think those screws wouldn't be long enough if there's a, one side where they'll be inset. I mean, it's counter. It's countersunk on one side and not on the other. So yeah. Actually, I can see. Get one of those started, I think. If I can get one started, then the other should be easy enough to line up. There. Now let's do the opposite corner. Oh, I was thinking about doing the fan shroud. Well, that would make the screws too short, I think. Pretty sure. I mean, most of them, most of these CPU fans don't have a fan shroud anyway. So. The reason it had one is because it was mounted sideways and it was right over here, just like, it, you know, where all the wiring, it was, the fan was on that side, <coughs> on this side over here. Well, the wiring is, and you could very easily get wiring into it. So, but yeah, and, and the other thing is all the reading I did the other day, um, it said that those four pin fans would run full blast. Well, they don't on that IBM. That The one on the IBM doesn't. Now it may be the fan, because I kind of read something somewhere I think that said some of them may actually be able to regulate the speed uh, with four pin fan maybe made in such a way that it could regulate the speed on a three pin header and I believe that is the case with that other fan because I, I heard it doing it big time for a long long time it was running real fast it, was, it always runs really slow and when I put it on there it looked like it was barely going to work I thought there was something wrong it was moving so slow and then uh, but it was working and I made sure it was working and everything before I buttoned it up can't see. <clears throat> so I, uh, but then whenever I was making the machine work hard, running Firefox and stuff yesterday for a couple of hours, it ran hard the whole time I was, you know, making it work. <clears throat> so it got loud, fairly loud. So, uh, Yeah, this one should, uh, I mean, it'll run at a normal rate at least because it's a three pin fan and a three pin motherboard. So. I think I got it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Put it down beside the memory so it don't decide to jump up into the fan. There you go. Memory doesn't get all that hot. The, uh, the CPU cooler would. Yeah, see, it's only got two memory slots. And, uh... Oh, I was looking at the wrong preview, I think, when I set that, but that's okay. Got the whole area. No, I wasn't. So anyway, I could have got closer, I guess, but I just now realized. <clears throat> but anyway, could have got closer and it wouldn't be so blurry. But, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll get a little closer this now before I turn it on. There we go, that's a little bit better. Because I'm going to plug it up and turn it on with it open like that and see how it does. Check my VGA cable. Okay. Oops, accidentally moved it, didn't I? There we go. Okay, now. EGA, I went ahead and got Ethernet too because I thought I might end up installing something on it. So I wanted to have the Ethernet available. Let's see. Where that thing is bent, it's gonna be. I can't tell which way it wants to plug in. That's it, isn't it? Sometimes these Ethernets can be so much of a pain. Oh, that one didn't look like it went that way, but it did. And this one has a clip, but it's always wanting to. It, Go down, you know, to to where it won't grab. There, it's not a very healthy clip. It's about worn out and getting. Worn, I think it wants to break. To about to the point where it wants to break. Oh, the leg of the camera's in the way. It's got to be moved. There. I can turn the head on the camera. Whoops. I was pushing down it by accident. There you go. Now, it's at an angle, but at least it's a fairly clear picture. Now, let me uh, switch over on the KVM switch. Well, right now we'll leave it like that, and then when I want to show the, yeah, there's no operating system, so it won't boot up or anything. I was only going to do that if I decided to install something on it. So, well, that's just as loud, just as full speed. Well, that's weird. Huh. 
That's really weird. Trying to get my preview going again so I can see what's going on. <clears throat> Yeah, reboot and select proper boot device or insert boot media. Well, I could put my little USB stick in it. I'll do that. Well, first I'll... Uh, it's running just full on. But I wonder if it's got something to do with... Well, it could be... The, my first thought would be the BIOS. So I think I'll turn it off. And I'll put my USB. Uh, I don't know which is the best place to put it. I guess that's okay. I don't know. I'm always worried about breaking it. I think back there is safer. Because when I'm moving the box around and stuff. Well, I didn't expect that to have it running full blasts. Now I'll switch my... Uh, <coughs> view I'll have to get back. cam 2 I'm going to do cam 2 and I mean you're not going to be able to read you know the monitor output anyway so this way you'll be able to see the fan and you'll see what I'm talking about at least when I'm talking about the I'm going to go into BIOS first <coughs> well yeah well I've got the easy to boot stick in there though. That sounds like a hedge trimmer. F2 for BIOS. The fan may be turned like to full or something is what I'm thinking. Let's see. Yep, still the same on the memory and everything. A little more system information there. Security, power, boot. Must be an advanced. It may be that it's actually controlled by the operating system, but I never really, I don't remember seeing that. In anything. It may be though once it. Okay, uh, primary video adapter AGP, which is the way it was. USB enabled, enabled, full speed. USB zip auto. Oh, I guess it's in power, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, but all it has is well, ACPI. Let's see. No, S1 state, which was, I just left it. S1 is the fastest mode, but consumes more power. S3 consumes low power, but drivers, drivers may not support this state. So I don't want S3. And then stay off, wake on land. On wake up event, land wake up event, PCI, power management wake up event. It says wake on land from S5, stay off. Anyway, it's not what I'm looking for. Stay off, stay off. Okay, oops, cancel. Boot. And it looks like it sees the, uh, yeah. Okay. I don't think I actually made any changes, but let's see if it's, Quit spinning like crazy. <clears throat> it's been unplugged overnight, so it's not like it needed resetting. You know, I pl just plugged it in. That fan sure don't put out as much air as that new one that I had on there did. That other one really blew a lot of air. But it sure sounds like it's going fast. <clears throat> Unless it's actually blowing down. <laughs> and what I was feeling was the back <laughs> pressure. 
I don't know if they all. I don't know. I don't. I. I, uh, I can't ever remember like if you can look at them. I'm sure you might be able to look at them I mean, if you would remember blades and what they look like. You could look at them and see which way they pitch and tell which way they blow. But. Um, I'm going to try booting it into something and see if it ever slows down. That That's weird. I've never seen one do that. And I don't think it was doing that before. I don't remember. I mean, it was the other fan that was the original fan. It, it has a missing blade and it vibrated a little bit. You could feel the vibration and I knew that was going to be bad. Well, quite a bit, actually. And, uh, but it wasn't loud, so I don't think it was going that fast. Let's see what's in the Linux menu. I didn't copy anything else on here or anything. Well, the, my easy to boot needs redoing. When I add new ISOs, you're supposed to just be able to add new ISOs and they'll just boot up, but it's not, it doesn't work with any of the newer ISOs. Uh, every domain and every Fedora I put on there for, Ever since I deleted, I think if Fedora 26 or 7 were working, and then ever since then they won't work, and I can't get it to. So the top one is bootfedora.org. That's where you can boot and install from the bootfedora.org servers, and then boot repair, distless remote, Fedora Life Security 64, but that won't work. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I know that won't work. This is not even a 64-bit machine. Oh, it's doing something different than I thought it would do. Huh. Do you want to use ISO ask? Oh, the ISO is smaller than the ISO security ISO. Replace the config ISO with a larger file of any content. Contig ISO. Yeah, can make files contiguous, so I don't know. And it says press enter to try ISO boot, but it's still won't, even if it'll try to boot to it. Something has changed though. That's weird. Okay, a lot of errors. I'm just gonna hit. I just really, I, I don't, I don't, I know it won't work because this is a 64-bit system. I just wasn't thinking when I tried to boot to it. I could just hit Control Alt Delete, I guess. I don't know why it's uh, sitting there going so fast. Maybe, no, I didn't plug it. I'm going to say maybe it still, like, sensed the other fan because I didn't plug that in until after I put this fan on there. I think it's still trying to load that uh, Fedora. That was X80, that was Fedora Live Security, but it's 64-bit. <clears throat> It possibly could run on here if it was 32-bit, but this is 64-bit. <clears throat> Unless I was wrong, and this is a 64-bit processor. But, uh, what's it doing? Oh, it's trying to load up that uh, ISO image. Well, it's 24 megabyte of 48, so then I, it's the iNetrid loading ISO Linux iNetrid IM, .img takes a while. I remember this. I'm setting it, like it just now counted to 32. Uh, there's no point though because it's not going to run. I think I'll hard shut it down. And I'm going to unplug it and plug it back in. It's the only thing I know to do. <clears throat>
<clears throat> okay, it's still running at 100 miles an hour. <clears throat> I wonder if that original fan is flat wired different than these other two. I mean, unless something, unless me plugging in that four pin fan kind of uh, broke something in the speed control, like shorted something, and so it's just, but it's still working and getting full power. I have seen them run really fast until the operating system started to boot up and then they slowed down. I've seen that quite a few times, or I've heard it, didn't, I wasn't looking like, like we are right now. Let's let it get into, let's try that before I go taking it out. It's the only other idea I've got. Well, I can put the old original fan back on it, see if it does that. And if it doesn't, then I could try swapping blades like I was talking about. I think the blades are the same size. I'll have to, the outside perimeter is the same, but that doesn't mean the inside where the blade goes is the same or the shaft or anything. That's why I wasn't really enthusiastic about that. That thing wants to be a quad. That'd make a good quadricopter if I had four of those. I think they'd take that. That, that thing might fly. It sure sounds like it. And that sounds worse than it did with that other brand new fan. I guess that other brand new fan must be a quiet fan after all. It was just making noise because it was. Uh, <clears throat> um, going so fast. I didn't ever check my sound. I just switched everything and looked at my previews. Am, am I working? <clears throat> okay, so there's easy to boot. Oh, now my preview over there is not quit loading. I'll try it again. <clears throat> I did hear myself for a second, though. Okay, BFO, DRBL, Fedora Life Security. I just for, saw it and clicked on it without really thinking. Rescue Tux. Yeah, I don't have much of just the, some of the rescue type stuff now because I'll just go ahead and go with part in Matt well, wait. I think part of Magic 2013 would run, and it's got more features on it. <clears throat> I think it would run on here. Now that 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 uh, do I want to use ISO S file extension always comes up, and as long as it, if it's gonna if it'll work, yeah, there's 32 and 64 bits, so the default is 32. So yeah, it's got both on it. So we're good there. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm be kind of surprised if it uh, fan slows down when this when, when this boots up. Of course, this would be a really slow. This one loads everything to RAM, so it's going to be a slower uh, boot. Slower time to get to find out if it's going to quit making all that noise. It bugs me a lot. I, I'm really getting noise fatigue easy these days. Have for the last several years. Slow time to get this. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I'm definitely not not going to be using it if it's going to keep doing that. But it wasn't doing that. I, didn't, I mean, if it was, it was just that that original fan was. <laughs> it couldn't have been that much quieter, especially with a blade missing. <clears throat> But if it's doing something weird, like, you know, the fan can't be controlled, then uh, I didn't, the funny thing is, I didn't see anything in there for fan control, like, you know, cool and quiet or any of that stuff you usually see in the BIOS. I didn't see anything about the fan in there. Did I just? I'm, ever since, uh, ever since I had my supper, I'm just, can't think straight which is actually not unusual, but, well, sometimes I'm all right, though. I mean, I've been, lately I've made a few videos after supper. <laughs> but, uh, and I did, yeah, I took all my medicine and everything. See, I have to, I'm diabetic, so I have to take 
After supper, I take uh, glucotrol, my glucotrol, and uh, for bre after breakfast, I take another, a different one. Fart, well, what is it called? I don't remember now. Um, so anyway, it shouldn't be. It, sh it shouldn't be blood sugar. I mean, it is, but it shouldn't be. <laughs> I can tell it is the way it feels, but. Uh, I eat the same. I eat kind of the same stuff almost. I alternate a little bit, but I eat pretty much the same stuff every uh, same type of stuff. Or, well, actually, every night I eat chicken and and uh, I try to eat high protein before bed because then I won't wake up. Didn't used to wake up as much. Like <laughs> I have to wake up to go to the bathroom, but not to eat. You know, not blood sugar problems. And I still do fine. I can last all night most most of the time. Or at least most of the night. Lately, I spend most of the night, and that means eight to ten hours, or even, well, eight to twelve hours actually for me. But last night I did wake up probably around the eight or ten hour mark, and I needed to thought I needed a snack, so I had it, and then I woke up again, and I was really tired and worn out, and just couldn't, didn't feel like waking up, so I ate another snack, and then. Slept another two or three hours. So I slept almost 12, 13 hours. Yeah, about 13 hours this last today or last night, whenever it was. Okay, we're all. I mean, it runs fine still. But boy, that fan. I guess I could put the lid on it to maybe help calm down that noise. But I don't think it's going to quit. Uh, I think. When they do make a lot of noise on boot up sometimes, usually by the time the operating system starts getting going well, it usually quits that. I don't know. Can't really imagine what would make it do that, except for something that's some kind of malfunction, you know. And with the high tech electronics like a motherboard, that's not something you can just figure out unless you're in an engineer, electronics engineer, and then you may have a lot of trouble. Because I watch lots of videos on that kind of stuff, and I see those people that know what they're doing, they, they sometimes get thrown around and around till maybe they just say, oh, well, it ain't worth it, <laughs> you know. Sometimes, most of the time, they figure it out. But I mean, that thing is going so fast. I guess if, there, <laughs> if there's anything that had polished that shaft and that bushing, it's this this fan going at full speed. <laughs> I ought to burn it in. <laughs> They're always talking about that on. Uh, well, they they talk about it. Let's see. Yeah, I was trying to remember. I was kind of all of a sudden confused. Well, do, do they say that about new motors, or do they say that about? They don't say. They say break it in for new motors. Burn it in. They say that on new computer builds, uh, which I always thought. Well, that's kind of silly. Uh, what are you burning in? <laughs> you know. But they'll say that. But uh, so that didn't make one bit of difference. Let's see if we can see the fan speed in the system profiler. I can't remember if it has that in it or not. And I think. I guess it wasn't quite through booting up yet. I, I tried to open, there it goes. I tried to open the fan deal and it hasn't opened yet. There it goes. I mean the profiler. Let's look at that first. Oh wait, no, let's don't because I might be able to do, I think this might have TeamViewer on. Well, I don't want to run, I don't want to, I tried to run TeamViewer on my machine and it wouldn't run in portable mode. I was gonna to have to install it and I didn't want to install it. Unless this has remote desktop in it. I think it has one or the other, either TeamViewer or BNC networking. Let's go in there. BNC viewer, but not server, yeah. <clears throat> Hmm. 
I don't guess it does have be a team viewer or anything like that on it. No, don't look like it. Okay, so. Well, since you couldn't be able to read this stuff anyway, I always have to just call it out. I won't. Uh, I'll just leave it where you can see that fan. Maybe if it takes off and flies, we'll, you can see it. Better not. That'd be bad. No telling what it would tear up. It's been so fast that that is actually a bit of a concern <laughs> that it could break the keeper and come on out and go. So it's 2.8 gigahertz Celeron, 499 megabyte of RAM, 106 megabyte used, 1920 by 1080 resolution. That was automatic in the boot. Let's see. Sensors, let's see what might show up in there. Looks like nothing. Nothing's showing up in sensors. I thought about running a the benchmarks on it, but or just make a report and then it'll run the benchmarks, but not with this fan doing this. The only one spot in there I can see that says says sensors, which would like be, you know, tell you the fan speed and stuff like that, it just blank. And actually, I already ran a benchmark on it before. I did it in the I-46 one, but... Yeah, I'm just gonna, there's a big blue quit button there. I hit that and it'll shut it down. I don't understand. I'm gonna hook up that other original fan to it and see if it goes 100 miles an hour. Thought it was going to shut it down. <clears throat> Maybe I needed to double click. It's still blued in like I clicked on it, though. Guess it don't hurt to click it again. Necessarily. There it goes. Sometimes you do that and it'll hold up the shutdown because it's trying to respond to what you gave it to do there. But, uh... That's a surprise. That's the thing. Um, no matter how simple anything seems to be, it always some weird things happening to make it take longer and longer and longer. It still didn't shut down. I don't know why. <clears throat> well, I'm going to get back on my main machine and switch to just the USB camera, I guess, because I'm going to go over there and hard shut it down. I'm not going to sit there and wait. On it. 
I guess I was on the wire, wired mic the whole time, wireless mic the whole time, yeah, because I just hit the control three to mute it and, it, and it muted it, but then I looked up to mute the SM58 and it was already muted. Okay, so I guess I forgot. I guess I was, yeah, I did check my audio, didn't I? Yeah, okay. I thought if I'm silent that whole time, I'm going to be mad. So I was on the wireless, which is no big deal. <clears throat> As long as that was the only thing going on <laughs> wrong. Uh, yeah, well, SM58 is muted. So now I can leave that like that and go over there. Hard. It still didn't shut down. And I don't know why. It, I don't know. Well, it could be that I may not be impatient on the shutdown. I might have got it hung up. You're clicking that shutdown button again. Usually when you click that shutdown button, it shuts down so fast it scares you. Okay. That's really weird. Let's see. I'm going to take my little USB stick out for now. <clears throat> Turn it on one more time. Oh. It's not blowing air. It's sucking air. The other one did just the opposite. It blew air out. I thought it didn't feel like it was moving a heck of a lot. It doesn't feel like it's moving a heck of a lot of air either way, really. Could be that it doesn't work as well uh, the way I have it. Maybe it would like to be turned over. I wouldn't see why that would matter. Yeah, okay, so the blades are all pitched exactly the same way as this one. Let me get it in there so that I can show them both. See, that's the way I turned it, and this one would, wasn't going to mount. Uh, you couldn't mount it the other way. Uh, well, you wouldn't want to, really. So, uh, but this one blew air out. This one should, too, I would think. Why is it going 100 miles an hour? I don't understand that. Let's go ahead and unplug it. Until we uh, get done messing with... <sighs> Pardon you. No, it's not that I don't respect you anymore. It's just that I'm comfortable with you, that's all. I don't even notice when I belch. Hardly. It's just that we really know each other now, that's all. <laughs> okay, now. Got two uh, two coffee can lids, and then I got and I end up with both of them full. There we go. Did I get them all? Oh, don't turn it over. The whole point was to not lose screws in the machine. I think. Okay, there's none in the fan. Where's the Where's the fourth screw? <laughs> that is coming off the sticker. Oh, there it is. I just couldn't see it. Okay. I was worried that it had gone somewhere and I was going to have to find it. Okay, so this one. Needs to... Uh, Laptop is getting tired again. Needs to come up there. Yeah, it wouldn't have ran at all if I didn't have it. It looked like I looked a couple of times. I don't believe I had it on there wrong or anything. Well, I broke that one in. 
I don't think I broke it, but I broke it in. Okay. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be using that. Let's see. The original fan. I don't remember which way it was on there. Oh, yeah. I think it was on there so the screws could go down in there. Just with that side up. I'm almost sure it was. Except for I think it was like that. I can tell by the way the cable was bent. It keeps it less in the way of the memory and everything. So I'm going to do that. Okay, let's get one started. Actually, I wasn't going to put it on there. Well, if I don't, it may go so crazy. I think I'm going to at least put two screws in it. Keep it from, <clears throat> if it's going to spin that fast, I don't want to be holding it in my little trusty little shaky fingers. Oh no, you went under the power supply, I think. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. But I'm definitely not happy about it. I think I can just tilt it up. I'll have to, oh. Why did it have to go? Did you really go down to that where I can't get you? That's what I thought. I'm gonna have to unplug all those cables. VGA cables and everything. There it is. No, it was up under the motherboard. See, I can't show all that fun stuff when uh, when I only have that one camera, but that's okay. Definitely great to be able to just seamlessly go over there and boot, you know, show it booting up. I think this is overkill, but for some reason I want to put the screws all in it. Well, the way it was going so fast, I think it's probably going to do it again. Well, if there's something different about this fan, we'll, we'll find out. Like if it's the only type of fan that will work on this motherboard, I don't know. Work right, I mean. Suppose I have that. You know, there's another fan deal right around the corner. That says rear fan. Yeah, so I don't, I've got it in the right place. Unless, of course, no, I don't. It seems to me I remember it being over here on this side. Like, that's why I think it belongs over here, you know. The other one says rear fan. Which might make it quit making all that noise, though, if I used it. I, you know, quit going so fast. That's another option to try, I guess. <clears throat> but the plug is, you know, where it plugs in is back here where I have a really hard time getting that camera aimed at it. So I just have to kind of do it. I can't even get my, I need the magnifying glass to see to do it. I couldn't get it to, couldn't get it to where I could see it and do it at the same time. All right, now it's ready to try again. Let's just turn it on like that. Oh, well, we'll have to plug it in first. This time I won't plug anything but the power. Now I'll go ahead. Because the only reason I had to undo all the power is because I, uh, uh, 
because I dropped that screw and I had to pick up the case to get it out of there. Shake to roll it up to where I can. Okay, now we'll turn it on. Ow, after we plug it in again. Oh, dang it. There, now we'll plug it in. Then we'll turn it on. That's why the camera wasn't aimed right, because I had to redo everything so that I could, so that I could uh, plug it in. How about that? It vibrates, but it don't make all that. No it doesn't go. That's normal. That one goes at normal speed. Huh. So my only other. That's really strange. So there's differences between these fans. I mean, it vibrates quite, you can really, really feel it. So it's not going to be good like that with that broken fit, you know, deal. But I mean, how would you know? I thought all these fans, the only differences in them were the amount of pins and the size, you know. But I do think that's blowing the air through it. It's not... I mean, I can't really feel, I can feel air movement, but it is not blowing out this way. And the, I think they both were. The other one, though, I swear it was blowing it out this way. Either that or it had so much back suction on it that it felt like it was blowing, you know. But uh, this other one, this new one, really moved a lot of air. You see, uh, they're, they're turned the same way. They look like they're pitched basically the same. And it was, I really felt a lot of air with that. That's, uh, so really, oh, there's its heat sink that came off that. I don't, don't need to put it back on that heat sink, but I want to put it. I do want it screws, though. What are these screws? I got screws in here. Oh, those are fan screws, okay. Well, that's where I guess I ought to put those screws right now before I forget, because I have them down here in a... Actually, I guess I have... Oh, yeah, the, the stuff... I can't show it, I'll drop them in the case. The little uh, locking mechanism for this box. I really kind of thought I would screw it back onto the box, but I was fumbling around and... Didn't want to drop it, so I put it. So I'll put those screws in the box with that fan, so I'll have the new fan and the new screws in the same box. I'm having trouble messing everything up here. Getting everything hung up on each other. Okay, uh, thing is, I suddenly am dying for another break, so no, no way of getting around it. So I'm going to have to stop here and start a new stream after my break. So I guess I'm going to try putting those other fins in that fan body. Okay, so I'll be back after the 